Okay, guys, we're going to talk now about understanding your rights under the Virginia Condominium Act Property Owners Association Act. This is not uh, part of the contract, and there's no official uh, initials and signature lines on here, but we want you to get the buyers to look at this, obviously, and then um, initial the pages um, that they have reviewed it. Reason this is so important is uh, condominium and HOA communities are growing. Um, about uh, 8,000 new condominium uh, or HOA developments are grown each year in the United States. 82% of new construction is formed under HOAs, and that's according to propertymanagement.com. In Virginia, we have 8,800 uh, HOAs in the state with about 2 million people in them, it's about 23% of the population. So when you uh, go out to look at properties um, with your buyers, most likely you're gonna see a growing number of properties that are uh, in situated in a condo um, association or an HOA association. So this form is divided up into two parts, the Condominium Act and the HOA Act for um, explanation purposes, I'm just gonna use HOA that people are living in an HOA. And so uh, I'm not gonna read every single line here, okay? But I will talk you through um, what are some of the most important things that you need to be aware of as the agent to help them uh, as they're going through these hundreds of pages of documents in the uh, the HOA docs and the, and the, uh, the condo docs. Um, but both of them are gonna be looking for uh, funds. Um, as you can see on, on this one, a statement of any expenditure of funds approved by the association or the board of directors that required an assessment. Okay, so the funds, what are the fees? Are there special assessments beyond the fees? Do you see one coming down the road? That should be in the HOA documents under the minutes. Um, the reserves of the fund, you know, how many hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars do they have in reserves to take care of the common areas? Like um, you know, like uh, like uh, paving, um, uh, landscape upgrades, um, things like um, roofs, if you have common roof area, things like that. Um, and what do they have as far as that kind of money that's in, um, in, in reserve? Because if they don't, that's a sign that you may have an assessment come up and an assessment can be very, very expensive. But when an assessment hits, Usually what the HOA gives is an option of pay it up front. Hey, we have a $5,000 assessment per household. <laughs> um, but you can tag that on over the next 10 years of $500 a year or the next five years of $1,000 a year, however you want to do it. But you want to know that by looking at the disclosure packet, uh, looking at the reserves, the reserve study, and if there's any financial things coming down the pipe. Also, the insurance coverage that's required on the association to cover the common areas and do um, and what the owners have to, to have as well. The next section is violations. Um, and that is an, uh, w when you look at, you've got the rules and regulations of living there. And as people are living there, do they have violations of those rules and regulations? Some of them may be lifestyle, and we'll get more to that in just a second. But most likely it's things such as, hey, you have algae on your siding. Uh, you've got um, a, 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 some um, shutters that are askew. you got peeled, peeled paint. You have a, cro a crack in your concrete walk, those types of things. And so you're looking to see if those come up. And the seller in the contract has already agreed to repair those things. And I'm just going to go ahead and get us out of this uh, the sharing mode here. Um, but the seller is is already agreed to take care of these items as well as say like county violations and stuff like that in the contract. So it's not a matter of negotiation when this comes out that, hey, you've got these problems with the association. Uh, these are violations. You've got trash in the yard. Your trash cans are in the wrong place. You got peeling paint. None of that is negotiable like a home inspection. Uh, they're in the HOA documents, the violations are cited, and the contract already says that the seller will take care of that. Now, have contracts gone through to settlement without the seller taking care of that? Yes, they have. And guess what? If they don't pursue the seller to take care of it, the buyer doesn't pursue the seller to take care of it, it's on the buyer to now, as the new owner, take care of those items. 
And so you want to make sure that those violations are taken care of. Um, other things like uh, have they received notices from the association? Um, and if they've received notices, are they backlogged? Have they not gotten fixed? Are there any deficiencies on that property for HOA um, dues? And are they paid up? If not, are they going to be paid up? Those types of things. And other things that you're looking for in those documents are legal issues the HOA may be involved with with that homeowner, but also legal issues that may be affecting the, the whole community. I have uh, one recently where um, uh, uh, someone was visiting the community and they stepped into a pothole, hurt their leg, and so they sued the association for over a million dollars. Um, so they had to disclose that. Now, they did have a little history in the HOA docs. He started at a million, came down to 300 thousand and now we're trying to work out an agreement with our insurance company of thirty thousand dollars so they just had to lay out what was happening legally and what they were having to do um, to to resolve that uh, then you have what most people are looking for i would assume is the lifestyle uh, the rules and regulations and bylaws where can i park my vehicles can i have a boat here can i have a trailer here can i have two trailers here are there limitations on what i can do there there's even a piece in the HOA documents or in the uh, the form here that the HOA has to let you know if you can have a U.S. flag there or not. And if you can, what's the size, the parameters, how can it be um, displayed, things like that. Also, decor, you know, the flamingo statues, stuff such as that. Uh, there's a new thing now that's out there in these in the uh, panel uh, in the uh, association docs. Can we have solar panels? And if we can, what's the limitations on that? Uh, and then the common area usage, uh, people are kind of surprised sometimes when they say, hey, I got a pool, I'm going to invite all my friends over, we're going to have a great time. And then they realize that when they come over, they can only get two passes for their friends and they got 15 people at the door. So you want to look at that in the uh, documents as far as lifestyle is concerned to see, you know, is that something that you're OK uh, living with? So once they reviewed this, which they get three days to review from the time of reception, if it's emailed or dropped off. They can extend that to seven days by contract. Uh, and that's usually up front. It's not like, hey, I've gone through my third day. I needed to go longer. You know, the seller could give you an extension up to seven days, but, he, but the seller's not uh, beholden to do that. If you agreed to three, you agreed to three. And the three days, it includes holidays and weekends. So if you get it on Friday, um, you've got Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And if Saturday and Sunday, the HOA doesn't, go into office and Monday's a holiday, all they have to work on is the HOA documents, looking if they're okay with it and moving forward or getting out. There's no negotiation on those documents. Hey, I don't like the way that they're doing this. Can we have them change it? There's no negotiation on that. It's either in or out when it comes to the HOA uh, documents. If it's mailed to you, then you have six days to decide from the postmark date. And then you can extend that to 10 days uh, if it was mailed to you. And that's how you go with the cancellation. There's a lot more to it. This is four pages, chock full of information. It's for the, the consumers in the transaction, but really you need to read that as an agent and get to know um, what are the rights and responsibilities under the HOA Act and the uh, Condo Act uh, in the state of Virginia. All right, got any questions? Uh, you got my, my email address. We'll talk about it, but uh, thanks for listening. I'll talk to you later.